Hi everyone, welcome back to the layer 3 curriculum. My name is Arul Richardson and I'm from the Technical Knowledge Management Group and I will be the lead instructor for the layer 3 onboarding program. So in today's video, we will talk about something new, which is the version 6 of the internet protocol. So let's begin. So what are we going to discuss in this video? We will first see the introduction part of the IP version 6 where I will give you a very brief introduction of IP version 6 and at the same time I will also tell you the motivation of why there was a need for IP version 6 addresses when we already had IP version 4 addresses. After that I will be discussing about the representation. Now since IP version 6 is a new version of IP of internet protocol so I will be discussing on how these addresses can be written down uh, how will these addresses be represented and at the end I will discuss about the shortening now why shortening you will come to know soon when IPv4 was developed it was really really popular and there was no real problems with IPv4 Everything was fine, but no one really predicted that there will be a boom in networking. Now, what do I mean by that is there was suddenly so much of demand and increase in the world of networking that the demand for IP addresses kept on increasing, not gradually, but drastically. What do I mean by that? Take yourself as an example. Just pause this video for a moment and reflect on how many IP addresses you as a single user are using right now. Take your time. Okay, so let me help you. I'm sure that you must have a phone right now and your phone, your cell phone is definitely using an IP address because it might be connected to the internet. Some of you might have one phone, some of you might have two some of you for some reason may have more than two phones but uh, my point is each of your phone is using an IP address now apart from this at your homes you might you might have a Wi-Fi router or AP which is also using an IP address in addition to this each one of you in ECI is using a desktop or a laptop now this desktop and laptop is also using an IP address some of you have your own personal computers or laptops. Even these are using IP address. So overall, four or five IP address by one single user. I have still not included your office accessories like your printers, sometimes your cars, sometimes your home appliances, which also might be using IP addresses. So just assume so many IP addresses and what do we have? We just have 2 raised to power 32 IPv4 addresses available. And now try to check what's the current population of the world. Of course, it's not enough. The amount of IP addresses that we have is not enough to suffice the current population of the world. So you might have a question. How are we still surviving with the IPv4 addresses? Absolutely correct. We are using some techniques like NAT, subnetting, supernetting and trying to reuse IP addresses. But you see, with the amount of population and demand of IP addresses, this is not sufficient. And therefore, there was a need to have a new version of the internet protocol and therefore we came up with IP version 6. Now again, why not version 5? Yes, you are right. Version 5 was an experimental version, so it was not really made a standard and therefore IP version 6 was the next version which became a standard and keep in mind it is used at this moment in some of the service providers and networking elements. Also, we do support it in ACI NPT. So the IP version 6 is of 128 bits, not 32 bits. 32 bits was IP version 4 and IP version 6 is of 128 bits what it means that we have 2 to the power 128 IPv6 addresses 
Now, if you just try to open your calculator, maybe your digital calculator or the one which is already installed in your computer and try to calculate this, how much number does this give out? probably it might not even fit it's that big and when you compare it with the ipv4 address huh, that's nothing with the new version we also made some new advancements and one of these advancements is the exclusion of broadcast they just thought that when there is multicast why do we need broadcast so they removed broadcast from ip version 6 so there is no broadcast in IP version 6. Keep this in mind. Another advancement of feature which is available in IP version 6 is Slack. Now Slack stands for Stateless Address Auto Configuration. We will discuss about this in a separate video. But just to give you a glimpse of what Slack means is the ability of a host to configure itself an IP address automatically without using a DHCP server. Yes, if you're still confused, no worries. We will discuss about this in depth in our Slack video. Also, since we have so many IPv6 addresses, there is really no need of NAT. Again, keep in mind, the statement that I made here is no need. It does not mean that we don't support NAT in IP version 6. There is NAT in IP version 6, but there is really no need of NAT because of so many IP version 6 addresses available. And last but not the least, the header is now made simpler than the IP version 4. So the IP version 6 header is much simpler than version 4. So let's compare the header of IPv4 and IPv6. So as you can see over here, on the left side, we have IPv4 header and on the right side, we have IPv6 header. So all that are yellow are the ones which are kept same in IPv6. So the version field, the source address, the destination address, everything are kept same in the IPv6 header, which is represented by yellow. All that is in red are the fields that are eliminated from IPv6 header. And, and all that are in blue are the ones which have the same function but has a different name in IPv6 header. And the last which is new in IPv6 is the pale brownish which is flow label. Now this is a new addition to IPv6 header. This addition is done so that only necessary details are there with the header. So you can see this is a very simplified IPv6 header. If there is something else required like checksum, then those informations are added in to this IPv6 header as additional headers. And this information is contained in the flow label. So that's unique about IPv6. So let's have a look on how an IPv6 address can be represented. So before that, let's have a glimpse on an IPv4 address representation. So an IPv4 address representation looks like this. X dot X dot X dot X, which is a 32 bit number. And each X is a decimal number, which is of eight bits. So an example is 10.10.10.1 where each X can have a range from 0 to 255. When we talk about IPv6, we know that IPv6 is 128 bits long and an IPv6 address is represented in this way. X colon X colon. So every X is a 16 bit hexadecimal number. Okay. So you can see it over here. It's a 16 bit hexadecimal number and the 16 bit hexadecimal number is referred to as a hextet. So each hextet is separated by a colon. So this X can be a 16 bit hexadecimal number. For example, 2041. Now 2041 are four hexadecimal number where the entire X 
is a hexted, which is a 16-bit hexadecimal number. So the range of each number can be from 0 to F. We know that the range of a hexadecimal number is from 0 to F and so each digit can be from 0 to F. So you can represent an IPv6 address in this way 2041 colon 1234 colon 140F and so on and so forth. Yes, this is too long and as you know, it it was a bit difficult for me as well to recite the entire IPv6 address and so there was a need to do something and that something was compressing and therefore in the next slide we will learn some compression techniques of the IPv6 address. Now that you know how long an IPv6 address is, therefore you know the importance of shortening and that's what we are going to learn now. Now keep in mind that shortening does not mean eliminating or compressing any characters or numbers in the IPv6 address. Shortening is a technique where we eliminate or compress zeros in an IPv6 address. So there are three rules. Rule number one says replacing a sequence of zeros with a double colon. Okay, is it difficult? Let's take an example. Over here, I'll take an example of an IPv6 address, which is 2041. So this 2041 is a hextet 0000, 000 colon 1111 colon 0000, 000 colon 0000 colon 0000 colon 0022 colon ABCD. That's really long. And yes, this is a 128-bit long IP version 6 address. So as the rule number one says, a sequence of zeros can be replaced by a double colon. So you can see in this address over here, which is highlighted in red, this is a sequence of zeros, a sequence of hextet of zeros. So one hextet is this. 0, 0, 0, 0. another hextet is this one 0, 0, 0, 0. and the last hextet is this one again 0, 0, 0, 0. so if you have a hextet of all zeros in a sequence together you can replace this with a double colon just like this 2041 colon 0, 0, 0, 0, colon 1111 and now all of these sequence of zeros is replaced by a single double colon and now I can read out this IPv6 address as 2041 colon 0, 0, 0, 0, colon 1111 double colon 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, much better than the previous one. So this is rule number one. Now you might have a question. Why didn't I eliminate these zeros over here? Patience. Okay. Over here I didn't eliminate these zeros because I don't have a sequence of hexted. I have a sequence of zeros but they are not a sequence of hexted. This is just one hexted of all zeros but this is not a sequence of hextet of all zeros and therefore I couldn't replace these zeros with colon. So this is the shortened version of the IPv6 address using rule number one. Let's take another example, a more tricky example. What if my IPv6 address is like this 2041 colon 0000, 000 colon 0000, 000 colon 1111 colon 0000, 000 colon 0000, 000 colon 2222 colon ABCD. <sighs> yeah, I know it's too long. Now let's apply rule number one here again. Now if you see properly, you can see there are sequence of zeros of hexted, but not once, twice. Here you can see it over here, which is highlighted in red as well as you can see it over here 
So Arul, where do I replace my sequence of zeros with a double colon? It's a good question. Should I replace it at the front or should I replace it at the back? No, I should replace it in both places. No, 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 no. You can use this double colon only once in an IPv6 address. So if you have shortened version of an IPv6 address, this double colon occurs only once. So you can shorten your address in this way. 2041, double colon 1111, colon 0000, colon 0000, colon 2222, colon ABCD, where the first sequence has been replaced with a double colon and the second sequence is kept as it is so you can see over here only once you can replace a sequence of zeros with a double colon you can do it either with this sequence or you can do it with the other sequence and keep the first sequence the same like over here 2041 colon 0000, 0000 colon 1111, double colon 2222, colon ABCD. Over here, I have replaced the second sequence with a double colon. Now, why was this required? It's because for the machine to understand. The shortening is for users and not for machines. The machine will still read it as a 128-bit address. So, if I add two colons in two places, the machine won't identify at which colon how many sequences were there. At the first example over here, we had two sequence at the first time and two sequence at the second time. What if I have three sequence at the first time and two sequence at the other side? In this case, how will the machine know there were three sequence in the first and two sequence in the second to complete the 128-bit address. I hope you're getting me. And therefore, the double colon is only used once. Now the machine will see at this whole address, it knows there are n number of bits. It will subtract it with 128 and it knows how many additional zeros it needs to stuff in this double colon. That's how the machine will know how many zeros needs to be stuffed in between these double colon to form a full IPv6 address because shortening is for humans and not for machines. So now that we are familiar with rule number one, let's move on to rule number two. Again, rule number two applies to zeros only. It does not apply to any other character. So rule number two says that a hextet with all zeros can be replaced with a single zero. Let's take an example of my previous shortened IPv6 address, which is 2041 colon 0000 colon 1111 double colon 0022 colon ABCD, where this double colon has a sequence of zeros. So I have one hextet, 2 hextet, 3 hextet, 4 hextet, 5 hextet and in order to complete a 128-bit address I need 8 hextet. So I know that in this sequence 3 hextet of zeros has been replaced by a single double colon. Now rule number 2 says that if I have all zeros in one single hextet I can replace it by a single zero. So I can write my IPv6 address as 2041. Now instead of four zeros, I can just replace it with one single zero and call it zero colon 1111 double colon 0022 colon ABCD. Clear? That's rule number two. Well, now having mastered rule number one and rule number two, let's move on to rule number three, again related to zeros. So, rule number three says that any leading zeros can be removed from a hextet. Only leading zeros. So, let's take our IPv6 address again. Over here, we have a compressed version, which is 2041 colon zero colon 1111 double colon 0022 colon ABCD. 
just focus over here. In this hex set, I have 0, 0, 2, 2. So rule number 3 tells me that the 0, 0, 2, 2 hex set can be written as 2, 2. So I can write my IPv6 address as 2041 colon 0 colon 1111 double colon 22 colon ABCD. It's very simple. If I want to write 1, I can write 1 like this. Or if I write 01, it's also the same. If I write 001, it's still the same. And if I write 0001, it's still the same. But keep in mind, I cannot say that 1 and 1 0 are the same. That's common sense. And that's the three rules that you need to know about shortening of IPv6 address. Well, this should be good enough to start with IP version 6. I hope that you liked this video and hope this video was informative. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to write to me or just ping me on link and I'll try to address your queries. We have more on IPv6 in the next videos. We will talk about types of IPv6 addresses, we'll talk about Slack, we'll talk about NDP and many more. So I hope I see you in the next part of the video. Until then, thank you and thanks for watching.